From the PSI ASI Satellite Studios in Hood River, Oregon, I'm George Thomas. You're listening to First Chair. Angelo, great to have you back. Thanks so much. Love being here. Fun topic today. We are going to be talking about warm up, but we're going to be talking about purposeful warm up. And uh, I like that qualifier. Can you get into that for us? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I I distinguish between warming up and like purposely warming up because I I I, I ride, ski and ride with some folks who their warm up is like for, they ride up the first chair of the day and then like straight line to the bottom, like start out the day with a the fastest run possible and I I just can't do that I just that is not that does not work for me so um, I, I I tend to to be the last one to the bottom during those runs but then you know I, I i think like finding what does work for you is is uber important you know and and starting out the day progressively now i i didn't think like this when i was 22 but you know being 52 and the joints and everything make noise and and all that, all that things all those things that start to happen to you like I, I realize now that if I don't start out smart, it shortens my day. I don't perform as well. So yeah, purposeful warm up versus either no warm up at all or or just uh, I don't know. To me, that that straight line on the first run, that's just calling it a warm up. But I I don't see how that's warming up at all. <laughs> and let's kind of get into really what is a warm up because you know. Most of the times I'm out these uh, days, I'm skiing at night mm -hmm. and I've worked for at least 12 hours because I'll teach an indoor cycling class in the morning and then I go to work. Yeah. Uh, I'm there at a stand up desk for eight hours and, you know, doing other things. I'm not just at the desk, but uh, moving around the clinic and everything. But I mean, when I get to the mountain, I'm tired. Yeah. And really the a lot of times the last thing on my head is okay you got to warm up i just i either want to rest or, or <laughs> i want to get out and i want to just move but um you know that's a big mistake i really need to get the body tuned up and i'm just using myself as an example because i i don't think that's really out of the norm yeah no i think you're right and i and i yeah i have a lot of days where i'm either at a desk or in a car for hours and then you end up on the ski hill fairly late in the day or um, just at the end of a long work week, even Saturday morning can feel like that. So um, I, I, I think of warming up as, well, it's, 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 it's situational, right? It's different for depending on what you're going to do. But it, if we're assuming we're all on the hill talking about sliding and snow sports, it, that all, in, that all involves warming up the, the body, right? Drawing attention to the, the muscles that you need to engage uh, to do this activity for the next couple of hours versus the ones that you use to sit in your chair or stand at your stand-up desk. It's just like about perking those things up, like waking them up to, to be for starters. But um, even like you can look at warming up from the, from the vantage point of people skills. Like I, when I taught in public school, I interacted in that building very differently than I interacted with people on the on the ski hill at night. So if I, if I taught all day, I was in one sort of mindset behaving like, you know, Mr. Ross, the school teacher, but then 45 minute drive to the resort. I don't want to be Mr. Ross when I get out with the, the telly Tuesday crowd and I'm just out trying to have fun telework skiing. So you got to warm up your people skills. Right. And then if, an, if that evening session includes teaching, you know, cause very often I'll, I'll run an evening clinic that's another aspect of something I have to warm up. If I haven't been thinking about teaching all day, maybe I've been helping shoaling with the budget and I'm in math mode. And all of a sudden I find myself eight people who want to um, have, a, have a, a good time at a clinic. You have to get yourself into teacher. mode. So I think first of all, warming up, let's look at it like holistically, warm up the body, warm up the mind, warm up the spirit and prepare for what you're about to do. I think that's important. And that brings in purposeful. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're preparing to get out for the, are, are you looking ahead at what you're going to do and you really design your warm up around the activities that you're preparing for? 
I've landed on three or so pretty consistent warm up activities that I do, whether I'm alone or if if I'm with a group on the hill. I I tend to run through these three, and people who have been in my clinics may recognize these because I've been doing it for a handful of years. But um, and I try to do it pretty consistently. But I also do this when I'm alone, so it it it's not I'm not making it up just for the clinic. This is what what helps me. My first run of the day, I typically. I'll bounce back and forth between one of two um, different first runs. So very often it's my, my body is creaky and and I'm more concerned about like, are my joints going to bend than unbend today? So I'll start my day with what I call the systems check. And at the top of the run, I'll focus on one foot and I'll make three, four, five turns with my, my entire consciousness in that foot. What's it feel like on the on the arch edge? What's it feel like when I'm on the, the outside blade of the foot? And if everything's cool there, I'll move over to the other foot. Do three, four, or five turns focused on that foot. And when I'm satisfied, everything's cool there, no wrinkles in my sock, whatever, move up to the shin of that leg. A couple turns with the shin, focus on where's the calf, what's going on there. I don't want too much pressure on the calf. I want to touch my boot. I don't want a whole lot of pressure on it. Check in with the other calf, kneecap, kneecap, quad, quad, hammy, hammy, hip flexor, hip flexor, glute medius, glute medius, glute maximus, glute maximus, and go the whole way up my body systematically till I get to the top of my head when I get to the chair and just check in with every part. And very often I'll discover like, typically for me, it's like when I get up to my hips or my shoulder, girl, I'll go, oh man, I am... I am really tight on my right side today. So I'm going to do a little bit of stretching before I get back up the chair, you know? And when I do this activity with, with folks, with members in clinics, it's the same kind of gig, you know? But I always like the debrief at the bottom. If I'm alone, I have that conversation with myself. If I'm with people, I'll say, hey, any, anybody learn anything on that run? And that's very specific language I always try to use. What did you learn on that run? Because then it sets the expectation that people are paying attention to what's going on, what they're doing, their performance and so on. And someone will say, oh, man, I, I learned how tired my back is. And then I'm like, OK, cool. Let's stretch a little bit. Make sure we get that loosened up before we go back up. Very, very often at this point in the game, without me even asking, people in my group will say, oh, I'm, I realize my my knee is is still bothering me a little bit. I had surgery three months ago, and so as as the coach, as the instructor, you're learning about you know little red flags about surgeries you may not have learned otherwise, or people are in um, physical therapy, and you learn things like that. Um, so that systems check is really a great run that physically gets me going. Um, the other one that I I always do, but sometimes I alternate the order. I'll just do observations on the way down the hill. And if I'm doing this with a group, I'll, I might say at the top something like, you know, when we, from here to the bottom, I'll meet y'all at the bottom at the chair, but I want you to each to be able to articulate three adjectives that you think of on the way down or three observations you make on the way down. And just tell the group what, what pops into your head when you get down there. And it's, it's really cool to watch that unfold. Like inevitably somebody will say, well, what are we supposed to observe? And I say, well, that's a great question, George, but I'm afraid that's all you get right now. And I'll ski, I'll, I ski away, see at the chair. And I'm purposefully coy because I want to know what your observations are. So we all arrive down at the chair and say, okay, who, who made observations or who's got some adjectives? And based on those observations people make, you start to glean maybe where they're coming from as learners. So if somebody comes down and, and and all three of their observations had to do with things they heard, you you may have a, a great auditory learner there on your hands versus somebody who comes down and only only made observations of things they saw. Very possible that person is going to respond good to visual cues when you're when you're coaching. And and likewise, people will make internal and external observations at different at different rates. Somebody will Somebody will come down and make three internal observations. You know, oh, my my abs are sore from my workout last week. My knee feels much better. And my my right boot kind of, my foot feels like the boot was tighter than the, than the other boot. And so all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, well, maybe this person responds to internal cueing better than external. 
And so I'm making all these little notes in my head as the coach, trying to figure out how to how to coach these folks more effectively. And I draw that to their attention too, and say like, yeah, if you do this with students, you may get clues as to as to how to coach them better. So it serves a couple purposes, you know. Um, I'll do a similar run with kids, and and rather than say make observations or give me adjectives. And this depends on the age of the kid. Like if it's a, you know, high school kid who loves English, then yeah, let's talk about adjectives. But if it's a smaller kid, elementary school age, I'll do, I'll, I'll change that activity and I'll call it Mars Rover. So you're the Mars Rover. You just landed on the surface of this strange planet and you've got these science, you know, these science instruments on your feet. This one measures that, this one measures that. Take your scientific readings, and then when you get to the bottom, you have to call in the NASA to give you a lab report, report back your scientific findings. And it's amazing what they'll come up with. And they think of their skis as an antenna or their snowboard as a, as a, I don't know, some kind of thing that's running on the surface, taking samples. But you get them paying attention to the surface and paying attention to their gear, interacting with the snow, and it's, it's really powerful. And they don't need to know the, all the ins and outs of that, but it, it gets their brains focus somewhere you know so i i do some some version of that as either my first or second warm-up and then the third warm-up and i do this with people too some folks might recognize this i'll say from here to the chair i want you to time your time your breathing with your turning and then you know inevitably somebody says well what do you mean like, i don't know what i mean just try it and it's really cool like to get to the bottom with that one i i nine times out of 10, somebody says, I never thought about breathing when I was skiing before. And it's like, well, <laughs> let's start there. Like you got to breathe when you ski you now, but um, it's really interesting to watch that one unfold because I've seen people really like get fired up about that idea because I mean, it, your body does flex and extend in a, in a rhythm and it's easy to coordinate that with your breathing. That's yoga after all. I mean, that's what yoga is, right? And then it's really cool to watch people modify that. So I, I and I'll say like, wait, well, where were you inhaling? I was inhaling during transition and exhaling as I got to the fall line. I'm like, cool, you try to flip it around and see what happens. And it just gets you into an experimental mode early on in the day, you know, like in a clinic. And it really gets people um, thinking about performance, like reflecting internally about what's going on, looking at the environment in front of them. And it, it, it helps facilitate conversation. So like those three warmups are really standard fare for me, whether I'm by myself or, or with people, but I have found them just as effective and important and handy as a, as a teacher, as I do with my own personal performance. So that, that's what I think of purposeful um, warmups. Like that's how, that's how it's, that's what it's evolved to for me. I mean, listening to what you do, I see those going, those could happen for a couple of runs. Um, and I think all too often we think of warm up as five minutes of, you know, whatever it is that we do, but okay, I got that out of the way. What you've just described actually sounds like a lot of fun and something that uh, we could really spend some time on. Do you put a time limit on it? It depends on the setting. Like, you know, if we're doing an exam, we always have a warm up run. So obviously, we can't spend as much time warming up in an exam as we can in a clinic. If it's a if it's a two day clinic or a five day clinic or something like that, like Eastern um, Eastern um, Academy that comes up our pro jam event. If I have a group for five days, I'll do that every day for most of the morning each day because it's it's typically everybody's first couple of days on snow. There's limited terrain at that time of the year here anyway. So like the more interesting stuff you can do, you know, with regard to the performance and, and the skiing or riding, the less people are paying attention to the fact that there's only one run over for the week, you know? So that just depends on the situation. But I, you know, if, if there's no reason to rush the warm up, like if it's not an exam and, and we're concerned about time, um, I let it run its course. If the group seems to be getting bored with it and then switch gears. But more, more often than not, what happens is after three or four runs of very targeted warm up like that, the, the clinic just takes a direction. Somebody will ask a question. Somebody will make an observation that just really 
pushes the clinic in that direction. So it really segues naturally without really being aware of like, okay, we're going to stop warming up now and start the clinic. It, just, it doesn't happen like that. It just, it just flows naturally into the, into the topic. And this seems like something wonderful to do with like a series class or a program class where you're going to be with the same group for six to eight weeks. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking, though, what about that first time on snow uh, group lesson and really getting into a more purposeful warm up where we are warming up more than just some stiff muscles and things like that? Um, because I love the questions you were asking and what a great way to get someone who this is their first time on snow, thinking about the surface, thinking about maybe more than the thing they're afraid of that's coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The one that really pays off in dividends with that is, is the breathing one, because it's, it's pretty pointless to tell somebody who's nervous to calm down. Right. Like when has that ever worked? But you don't have to tell them to calm down. You can get them to calm down a little bit, trick the brain by getting the CO2 out of the lungs and exhaling is a really good way to do that. So if you can get folks who are nervous and you know, particularly it's their first time to really breathe with intention as they're sliding, that can help ease some of the nerves. So that that has an action, a very practical application. But you know, like the systems check and whatnot and bending and unbending the joints. It, it's it's pretty cool to work with new skiers and say, well, how how squatted down can you get and still slide and feel balanced? How tall can you get? And let them explore that range where things things you lose effectiveness as you get to the, the bookends of either end of that range. If you're too tall, you can't access movement very easily. And if you're too, too flexed, you can't access movement very easily. So that's really great with new skiers too, is to, to explore the body and what's going on when you're sliding. And, you know, do you did the last one, you were really tall. Let's do this one middle and the next one we'll do short and, and play around with that. It's kind of a modified version of, of that first warm up, warm up activity I mentioned, you know. Something that's very important, often easy to overlook. Uh, anything you would like to add in conclusion about purposeful warm up, Angelo? I just encourage everybody to find what, what works for them and do it, you know, but I, I encourage everybody to find something that works and do it because I, I see a lot of folks who just don't really seem to warm up at all. And I, I think that's, uh, that's a, 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 not an ideal practice if the muscles are cold or, you know, the getting to the top of the run and deciding you're going to, you're going to shoot to the bottom and do it as fast as you can. Like, man, what if there's a big sticky mess of snowmaker water that just landed there and you, like, it just seems like a bad idea. So I would encourage folks to find a warm up that works for them personally. And, and as coaches, find warm ups that give, find warm ups that require your students to give you information that's going to help you and them with their experience, you know. Um, if, if you can work that out and, and have some purpose that, that works out with multiple benefits, then I'd say, what's the harm? Angelo Ross, thanks very much for your time. Really appreciate having you on First Chair. Love it, George. Thanks. From the PSI ASI Satellite Studios in Hood River, Oregon, I'm George Thomas.